Hey yo everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Batman Dead to Rights. Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, Batman Dead to Rights is part of the Confidential series, and as I said in all my other Batman Confidential reviews, the Confidential series are stories set earlier in Batman's career, similar to the Legend of the Dark Knight comics. However, different from The Legend of the Dark Knight comics, the Confidential series also has a theme to it. The first of something in Batman's life. The first time he fights Lex Luthor. The first time Catwoman and Batgirl go toe-to-toe. -to -toe, or the first time he meets up with King's Pat. Or the first time he plays Nintendo Wii. Whatever it is, it's supposed to be the first of something. However, in recent story arcs, they've kind of dropped the first of whatever theme. They're focused mostly on them being earlier stories in Batman's career. That's not to say that the first of whatever isn't in the story. It's just not as big or prevalent or important to the story, so it's not really worth mentioning. So don't get your head all twisted up in a knot if you can't figure out what is the first of whatever, because chances are they might just drop it in general. And now putting that little description of the Confidential series aside, we can actually talk about Batman Dead to Rights. And this should be a fairly quick review because it's a fairly quick story. But there are two major themes to the story, which I will get into in a moment. Now, Batman's Dead to Rights is set early in Batman's career, in the first year. Now, we know this because it's actually right after Batman defeats the Joker for the first time. He's actually dragging the Joker to the police station to get arrested. Now, the first theme of this is that throughout the whole entire story, Joker is actually in jail or in court, and the whole theme is that, while incarcerated, Joker is still killing people. He doesn't need to be out on the streets to kill people. He can be locked up away and still have the ability to knock people out. Wow, that's pretty impressive. The second theme to the story is that one of the people that the Joker kills is a wife to a police officer. Now, the police officer goes loopy and crazy in the fact that his wife is dead, starts drinking, starts watching Star Trek Voyager and the Star Wars prequels, which can cause anyone to go a little bit loopy, and he becomes a person called Bad Cop. Yes, Bad Cop. Anyways, Batman needs to stop Joker from killing all these people, even though he's incarcerated, and stop this Bad Cop from doing something, well, bad. Joker is a villain unlike Gotham has ever seen, so, well, they're going to have to change the rules on how to deal with his kind of villainy. So that's the basic story right there. On to the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Good. Well, the first good to this is that it is very easy to pick out in continuity. With the Confidential series, they've kind of been a little iffy on where they belong in the timeline. Now, technically, the con uh, Confidential series is canon. So, that means it does belong somewhere in the Batman timeline. But with some stories like Batman, Bat and the Beast, you have no idea where to place it. It's good to know that they actually cared to tell us where this takes place, after Batman and Joker's first meeting, whatever you consider canon from Batman and Joker's first fight, whether it's Mad Men and Lovers, or The Man Who Laughs, or whatever. But when it comes down to continuity, it tells you right away where this is. Second good thing is that this is a unique story. Joker's incarcerated the whole entire time and killing people in very unique ways. So, it's not like any other Batman story we've had before. It's, ha it's like the Gotham PD and Batman need to think outside the box when dealing with this new kind of criminal. So, in that, it's a unique new story. And the writing isn't bad. Um, it has a great dynamic between the Joker and the Batman in this story. I also how they like how they give a little nod to continuity, you know, like Commissioner Loeb still being around, or Barbara Gordon showing up being, you know, the adopted daughter of Commissioner Gordon, and, you know, those little things here and there. Nice little nod to continuity makes me happy, and I'm sure it makes everyone else happy. Bad. Well, the first bad, and this may be more of a personal gripe for me, is the fact that they deal with stuff that's in our world. You're probably saying, well, what do you mean? Well, for example, they make a reference to Grey's Anatomy. Really? Now, this is supposed to be set earlier on in Batman's career. If that's the case, Batman's been around for, give or take, 10 or 15 years. 
And if they're making reference to Grey's Anatomy now, that makes no sense. Because this is supposed to be about 15 years ago. Yeah. See, I hate it when comic books use outside references or dates. Uh, dates in particular. Someone could die in 1998, and then seven years later, only a year has passed in the comic book world, but they still died in 1998. It's just, it's not worth doing because it just screws around with time and all this other stuff, and it, it kind of annoys me. That's more of a personal gripe, and it's, I hope you understand what I'm saying when I say this stuff, but I would rather they deal with their own time structure and not deal with outside stuff in our world. But again, like I said, it's probably just me when it comes down to that. Second thing is that the stories are quick. You'll read through these very quickly, and they kind of lose their momentum because it gets broken up into two stories. So you have this momentum building with this Joker story, and then it kind of stops, and then you go into this bad cop story, and the momentum kind of stops there, too. It really just kind of ruins the reading process for the person. Lastly, is other than the Batman-Joker dynamic, the story isn't exceptionally dynamic in any other way. It's not exceptionally bad in any way, but it doesn't really stand out at all and in any way. So, whether or not you should get it. Well, when it came down to my poll this week, this week which was Brightest Day Volume 1, Boost the Gold, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and this, surprisingly, this was the comic I was looking forward to the least. However, this actually surprised me. I enjoyed this. This was fun. Do I recommend it to everyone? No. I recommend this mainly to people that are fans of Joker or fans of the Batman-Joker dynamic. Outside of that, general comic book enthusiasts or general Batman fans probably won't enjoy this as much as people that are just Joker or Batman-Joker dynamic fans. You know who you are. There's some people out there that don't like the Joker. He's a very popular character, but there's some people that just get sick of him after a while. So if you're one of those people, stay away. Don't pick this up. However, if you have a little extra cash on your hands, and only if you have a little extra cash, um, then I do recommend picking up. It was fun, it was enjoyable, and the good definitely outweighed the bad. That's what I can say about this. The good definitely outweighed the bad. So like I said, if you have a little extra cash on your hand, and you like that good old Joker-Batman conflict dynamic, then you might enjoy Batman Dead to Rights. It surprised me, and it might surprise you. So with that said, I'm going to end this review here. This is Andrew saying, peace out for now.